The opinions expressed on this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of Cable 14, its sponsors or its shareholders, Kojiko Cable, Shaw Cable and Source Cable Limited. Welcome to the February 21st edition of Hamilton Talks. I am Larry Diani, and Hamilton Talks is a community affairs program that talks to prominent Hamiltonians and sometimes Hamiltonians who may not be as well known but are also moving our community forward. And it's my great pleasure this evening to be in conversation with Mr. Mark McNeil. In the tradition of traveling troubadours from centuries ago, Mark McNeil is both a news reporter and a singer-songwriter. Since 1981, he has worked for the Hamilton Spectator, covering everything from crime to politics. He has served as the paper's environmental writer, editorial writer, assignment editor, election editor, and managed an award-winning special section about James Street and a 68-page Hamilton Memory Project Souvenir Edition for the city's 160th birthday. Last November, he brought his journalism and musical talents together in a groundbreaking song, video, and eight-page newspaper section called Private Riley that commemorated the 150th anniversary of the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry. Mark is busy in his singer-songwriter life outside the spec. He wrote and performed the music for the popular music James Street at the Lyric Theatre in December. He has released four albums, he frequently performs around the city, and has been featured at the Festival of Friends more than 10 times. And we welcome you, Mark McNeil, to our program. Thank you. Thank you for having you me. You lead a busy life. Well, you know, you only, you only have one of them, so you try to do as best as you can with it. Well, and you know what? I want to talk about all aspects of it okay. in the next 20 or 25 minutes or so. But I want to start with your earliest days because you were not born in Hamilton. Let's, mm. let's confess that. Well. You were born in? Um, Ottawa, actually. Our capital. Uh, Ottawa. But you have a special connection to Hamilton. Not only have you been here for a long time now, but well, what's the special connection? Well, both my parents grew up here and uh, a couple of gen or generations back on my mother's side. So uh, I had quite, a, uh, uh, quite an understanding of Hamilton before I got here because there were always all kinds of stories about Hamilton. Did you ever visit Hamilton? Oh, we used, to we used to come uh, once or twice a year at least because uh, I had a number of aunts and uncles that lived here at the time. And what were your impressions of the city then? Well, at that time, you know, we're talking like the 70s, uh, I, I, <laughs> I, I, it used to make me sneeze a lot, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think I was a little allergic to it. But uh, I did eventually get over that and, uh, and came, to, uh, came to like it. Yeah, indeed. Well, uh, what brought you down here permanently, eventually? Well, I ended up, uh, well, I went to university, uh, studied journalism at Carleton, and... Um, and there was a summer uh, program at the Hamilton Spectator, and they, they came to uh, they came to Carleton and interviewed people, and uh, so I, ca I came down here to work for the summer for a summer job, and that was uh, 1981. And of course, you've stayed ever since. Yeah, that's true. Now, uh, Mark, in the bio, the intro, I read that you, uh, as a reporter, have done everything from politics to crime. Some would say that's pretty well the same thing, but that's another <laughs> story. What? Of all the assignments you've had, was the most interesting? Would you say? Oh, uh, well, well, I, I particularly like working on the uh, on special sections that I've done on uh, Hamilton history. Um, I've done uh, three in the last um, in the last several years, which sort of brought me full circle because my parents used to talk about Hamilton history. So when I came to Hamilton, I, I kind of got to um, you know, learn more about it, and I would go to the streets that they talked about and. Uh, and the first one I did, the Hamilton Memory Project, uh, my mother actually was a, was a great resource in, uh, in, in, in um, putting it together. Well, and, and history is obviously a love of yours. I oh, mean, absolutely. It comes out in your music, and we're going to hear some of that. We're going to talk about your artistic musical side in a second. Uh, but also in, in your reportage, in fact, one of the assignments you have currently is to talk about landmarks in the right. city and the connection of the names 
uh, to uh, those landmarks. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's called Namesakes, and uh, it's a uh, it's about a, a street or a building or um, a statue or a school or a park, uh, and, uh, and and what I do is to, uh, try to find out the name associated with it. So it, it might be you know Jackie Washington Park, um, and um, it, it's quite, see what happens is is ones that have been named more recently, pretty well everyone knows, but uh, ones that were named a long time ago, uh, not so much. And, uh, and actually, I found a, a lot of streets are named after a former mayor, so maybe uh, your name might end up on a street uh, who someday. Knows? Deanny yeah. Boulevard, who knows? I, I like the ring. I like the sound <laughs> of that. <laughs> listen, it's, it's a, it'll be a one-way street. Uh, <laughs> but, but listen, um, you also did something called This Day in History. Right. But I don't see that. Has that been replaced by the namesakes? Well, well yeah, more or less. But uh, see what happens that after, after you've done 365 of them, um, you know, it was... You've we, talked about we, it. Well, yeah. yeah, we would have to uh, repeat probably. But, and, and but more than one thing usually happens on any given day. Yeah, but I, I, was, I was always trying to find a very interesting one, you yeah. see. And, uh, and I, I thought the namesake uh, would be a nice uh, kind of twist, and it would also uh, get at uh, what we're trying to get at, which is uh, bits of Hamilton history. Yeah, indeed. And we'll talk a little bit about that, as I said. But one of the special editions that you did, right. I think you won an award for, didn't you? Win uh, yeah, it, it, won, it won a... Uh, talk, talk about this. I don't know if, if, uh, if uh, the camera can pick this up. Yeah, that was, uh, that was called the Hamilton Memory Project, and it was um, for the 160th uh, birthday of the city. It was in uh, 2006. And uh, so I thought it would be a neat idea to uh, reach out to the community and have them send in their little, little uh, their stories. Uh, uh, and then the idea would be, their stories from Hamilton history, and then the idea would be to sew them all together at the end into this project. And it's, you know, 68 pages long. And um, so we had, we had a ton of stuff come in, and uh, it was uh, really interesting uh, material. And, and that's, that's the end product. There's also a lot, of, a lot of material online as well. And one of the interesting things, of course, is it has a lot of picture of personalities um, from uh, political as well as business as well as community life in general. Absolutely, They're yeah. a great keepsake uh, yeah. as well. Um, so the uh, other side of your life, of course, has to do with music. Right. Uh, and uh, you're a very talented musician. You're going to play a little bit of music, and we've got a YouTube piece that I think is just excellent. We're going to watch as well. But you have taken both loves, that is the musical talent you've got, the music that you like making, and combined it with history and the history of the city. Mm. Talk about motivation for that. Well, it's, um, I, I came to... Uh well, both the music and the journalism have, 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 have kind of dovetailed in my life. Uh, I, I got uh, interested in music in high school. I started teaching music in uh, in grade 13, and then uh, when it came time to go on to university, I, I, I decided to go uh, to study journalism, and I uh, I taught music on the side. It was actually the way that I was able to uh, pay my way through it through uh, Carleton, and um, so so when I when I came back here, uh, when, when I ended up in Hamilton working for the Spectator. Um, I, I, I came to know that there's a very rich uh, music uh, community here, and I started uh, playing at different places. Started off at a place called Baytides. I don't know if you remember that. That was out. No. Uh, that was around uh, King and uh, Victoria area. What was it called? Uh, uh, Baytides. Baytides. Yeah, and uh, back in about 1982, 83 thereabouts. And then I started going to the Hamilton Folk Club, which at that time was in the uh, Gown and Gavel. Mm -hmm. It's at the uh, Pheasant Plucker now. Mm -hmm. And um, from there, I, I got to know people in Brantford. I started playing there. There was a, a folk club in Brantford. And then um, I got to know the people at the Festival of Friends. And I think the first time I played Festival of Friends was uh, 1987 or 88, uh, which was a great experience. And, and the thing about, about music is, is that uh, is, it's almost like an addiction. You know, you, you play a song and, and it, it goes well for you and you want to do it more and more. And, uh, and there's well, always something to learn. Well, you've taken it to a, to a, another level. I mean, for all intents and purposes, you're a professional musician uh, with a home studio. Right. What motivated you to do that? Well, that's the the other thing about it is is it's a great time to be a musician because the uh, because of the technology. Uh, like, like I have more uh, more power in my home studio than the Beatles had. Uh, 
you know, in terms of tracks, in terms of being able to do things technologically. D digital has just uh, changed everything. And um, so, so I, I stay up very late at night, uh, you know, doing different tracks. I, pl I play many, inst uh, quite a few different instruments, so I'm able to do the different tracks, uh, you know, bass and guitar and different stringed in instruments, mandolin. I have a rudimentary knowledge of, uh, of keyboards, so I'm able to, uh, I, I can do the whole, like the Private Riley song we'll hear later, I did. I did pretty well the parts. So I heard you say. Uh, I mean, I remember John Lennon saying that he was more popular. That the Beatles were more popular than Jesus. Yeah. And you just said that you're more powerful than the Beatles. I don't know if that's. <laughs> well, uh, my studio has more capability than, than the Apple Studio I'm, that they used at the I'm time. Glad, I'm glad. Oh, you're clear. trying to catch me. I, I did. You know, know. I'm playing the reporter's <laughs> trick, right? Um, well. The the musical that I came to see in December, of right. course, James Street. Yeah. You wrote the music for that, uh, but not the uh, the script. Right. Uh, who wrote that? Um, Ron Weiss uh, from the uh, Art Word Art Bar. Uh, he 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 wrote that, and it, it started actually with uh, with this. This was a section uh, that, uh, that was in the paper about James Street, and um, as I was working on it, um, on on that section. Uh, it occurred to me that, that the uh, the characters and history of James Street was uh, would make a great play. So uh, I, I went up to Ron one day and I said, Ron, you know, you should you should really think about doing a play about James Street. So he he, uh, he worked on that and uh, and, and you know, eventually uh, he eventually finished it and came up to me one day and he said, I, I got it done. I said, that's fantastic. He says, I, well, I'd like you to write the music for it. I said, well, I could probably do that. And he says, well, can you have it done in two months? I said, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I sat down and, uh, and and actually I got up early every morning. Uh, you know, I get up at five thirty, six o'clock in the morning, and I and I uh, and I put a good two or three hours in before I got to work and managed to get it done for about twelve songs. Well, and in fact, I came to see it as I said. I came to see it twice, so you know that <laughs> I really enjoyed yeah. it. The second, the first night, I came with my wife. The second night. Uh, I actually brought up an entourage of friends I to see it. Very and, much appreciate it. Well, it, but, and they thoroughly enjoyed it. And I selected friends who grew up around James Street. Right. Uh, and so the play and the story uh, said more to them because of their own experience with the city. Uh, but it talked, the premise of, of that play really was Hamilton through the centuries, right? Mm. And, or Hamilton through, the, through its life uh, mm. and some of the occurrences on James uh, both good and, and sometimes not quite so good, as seen through the eyes of uh, a narrator and, uh, and some of the characters mm -hmm. who inhabited the time and traveled through time. Uh, and you selected some songs which I thought were very interesting. You're going to play a song for us now. I know we're going to see Riley, which was part of the show, but it was this one, um, which is uh, Education and the Blues, was this in the show? Uh, well, I did actually play it in the show, but it, but you'll remember um, at, at the uh, beginning, uh, Ron and I came out and did a couple songs before yeah, the show. So it was one of the ones I I, I, I did there. Uh, um, um, him and I, he played the, uh, the violin with me. So it, it was it was not technically part of the show, but people who came out to see it heard the song. And and I, I knew I remembered it when you were practicing earlier. Can we hear? Can we hear some of it? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, do you want to play some of it or all of it? Or all, all of it. Yeah. Oh, let's okay. play all of it. All right. And again, this is called Education and the Blues. In the Blues. They say you need an education. Learn about science and history. Take some study about arithmetic. Learn to recite your ABCs. But I took a different kind of lesson. When I fell in love with you, you gave me a course in heartache, an education in the blues. Now I got a blues baccalaureate. Don't for a 
master's degree. The way things are going, I'll be in Rome to get my PhD. That's what BB means in BB King. Stands for Bachelor of the Blues. But everyone knows he's got more letters than that. It's just that BB sounds cool. Now I got a blues. Baccalaureate Going for a master's degree Where things are going I'll be in Rome Get my PhD Know the blues you need to study hard But you won't find it in any book You need to have somebody break your heart Right after they stick it with a hook And I got a blues Baccalaureate Going for a master's degree Me dying Broke down and crying Through education and blues Education and the blues Education in the blue. Wonderful. <laughs> now, how long would it take you to write a song like that, Mark? Uh, well, um, that one actually came fairly quickly. Uh, it came fairly fast. Um, I probably a couple of hours I had most of it done and, and what I what I tend to do is I tend to sort of uh, go over the words and change them um, you know make editing changes over the next few weeks and then I'll record it and listen to it and try to think of ways that I could make uh, certain certain lines better so it uh, you know over, over uh, a few weeks I'll, I'll have it pretty well nailed down but the prob problem I have is I'm, al I'm always uh, wanting to change things you see and uh, that, that's uh, um, so, so I, I might make small alterations years later. So, do you uh, record these as well? Um, I know. I think you're working on a CD as as we speak. Right. Yeah, I have a uh, home studio um, where I um, where I record them one track at a time, and sometimes, sometimes and I'll bring friends in to do other tracks, and. Uh, and, and the way the process works is you basically build the song. So, you, you know, you'll lay down uh, drums and, 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 and bass and then a add other instruments and, and, um, you, and you kind of sit back from it and say, well, you know, that's working or that's not working. And, uh, and uh, you know, sometimes you'd, you'd be playing with it for weeks and, uh, and other times it'll come fairly quickly. Excellent. And, of course, the next song we're going to hear from you, actually, we have it on YouTube. Uh -huh is uh, again based on uh, a piece that you did for The Spectator uh, commemorating uh, the 150th anniversary of uh, our famous Riley's, the Royal Hamilton Light Infantry, and it's the story of Private Riley. Tell us a little bit about the story before we hear it. Uh, the, uh, what, what happened was um, uh, at The Spectator I, had a, I, I did a story about the very first casualty the very first uh, Royal Hamilton Light Infantry uh, person to die, and he died in the uh, um, Fenian Raids in uh, 1866. And uh, they, they found his grave in, in, uh, in Burlington. And uh, so, so I, I, I wrote about that. And it, it got me to thinking about, about him. Uh, his name was uh, Private Morrison. 
and um, and then the about the Rileys, the RHLI more generally. So I um, did a lot of reading and, and research, and then uh, one day thought that a good way to tell their story might be in, in a song. And so I thought, well, what I do is I'll, I'll call it uh, Private Riley, and uh, in the, in the fir and it would be kind of like a Forrest Gump sort of figure, you know, where he finds himself in these historical events. And so on the first verse, he's he's in the uh, in Ridgeway f uh, fighting the, the Fenians, and in the in the, uh, in the second verse, it's the First World War, and the third verse is Dieppe, and of course the the RHLI. Uh, Lost 200 people in uh, in one day at the uh, in India, and then the, and then the last verse uh, is about Kandahar, and uh, so I started playing it around a bit, and people really liked it. And one day I came to the Spectre and I thought, well, you know, this would make for a nice video that we could we could maybe uh, do a video uh, focusing on uh, historical photos of. Uh, um, to go along with the verses, and uh, th they really loved the idea at the Spectator, and so uh, Barry Gray and I uh, um, worked on that because by, by that time I had uh, I had recorded Barry Gray, the photographer, yeah, the who does a lot of videos these days, does mm -hmm. a wonderful work as a photographer and great work as a uh, videographer. So we uh, we sat down and uh, and worked on collected all these uh, collect all these photos to, to do it, and um, and then it, it kept getting bigger. Um, w we, we ended up putting out this, this section to go with it. It's eight pages long, and there's a whole uh, bunch of uh, material on on the web as well. And it was, it was it, the uh, the crowning moment. The the really moving thing for me was uh, the day it was published. Um, uh, we uh, I I got a chance to uh, perform it with the RHLI band, who are featured in the video. And it's a 37 piece band. Uh, Michael Rehill is the uh, band leader. I think you know him probably. Uh, I do know him. A yeah, very yeah. fine former uh, principal and that's resident right, that's right. of Stony Creek as exactly. well. He did the same same, yeah. same job that you did. Yeah. And, and uh, he uh, anyway, we sat down together and uh, and uh, worked on a, on, a, on a score. And uh, he, he of course did most of it. And uh, it turned, out, it turned out really well. I was, uh, I was, I was amazed. Well, we we are going to let our viewers hear oh. that. It's a marvelous song. It was also part of James Street, yes. and it and it'll be part of the CD that you're putting together yes, now. Exactly. And I can't wait to to, to actually thank purchase you. it. Uh, Mark, thank you very much awesome. for appearing on Hamilton Talks. Thank you. Continued thank good you. luck with your reporting career and your musical career as well. We've been in conversation with Mark McDeal of the Spectator. We're going to hear him sing Private Riley. And I just remind you to, uh, to watch next week because Mayor Ken Hewitt of Haldimand is going to be on this show. Now Private Riley with Mark McNeil.
Kevin Riley on the beaches of Dieppe. Waded through the water with our guns above our heads. Jerry sat and picked us up in a hail of screaming lead. We bravely charged forward as the water all turned red. I'm a soldier. I'm a soldier. Suicide bombers forever I'm a guard. And sometimes I do wonder, have I really come that far? From a scare kid with a musket riding in a cattle car. 